Hi everyone, Zoras here uh, with you today so for our weekly stream of Terra Mystica. This week I'll be streaming uh, Arena. Let's not wait and jump in the Q4 Arena right now. Here we have uh, our little game. Alright, so I'm picking fourth in this. Uh, you see the two heard cult. Uh, probably why cultists were picked. So Kiltis you want a uh, double cult income bonus, like the Earth cult here. That's very good for them. Um, dwarves probably for the same reason. Dwarves start with two on the Earth cult uh, and they can that will help them to exploit this double Earth cult. Um, you have a digging round. The digging round is always a very defining event in round three. Uh, so. Uh, that's often will be what you base your decision on. Uh, so often like Darklings, uh, Houselings, which we cannot take now that cultists are taken, are often choice. Uh, someone went with Mermaid. Um, will you see like there's the past shipping bonus, so maybe that's one reason. Track is not especially money rich. And, uh, the bonus are not especially money rich, but uh, I'll say that the track is money rich. So you can have like uh, the cult in common round two and three. So those are two early cult, and they give you uh, some coins. So someone is suggesting fakirs. <laughs> fakirs. Uh, can be an interesting choice because you want to have a second early temporal early. I don't know if that's too early, that's very early. Um, so yeah, probably if you've never seen Oran of Fakirs, it's because they are considered a weaker faction. Uh, that was in the base game, now we're playing with landscape and Fakirs are actually a strong faction. We can put them in. So, Let's take Fakirs. It will be like the classical choice in this kind of setup would have been Darklings here. But uh, Darklings are... we see them often, so well, a game with Fakirs can be different. It will be interesting to see how we uh, gauge them, because there's cultists in the game too. Uh, probably uh, here... Fakirs I find uh, very hard to gauge now. Uh, they are obviously much much more powerful because we're playing with landscape and their landscape is overpowered so uh, their landscape their special landscape uh, it gives them two coins every time they make a jump so kinds of fix a lot of the economic problem that they used to have we have like the temple in uh, second round here which might be interesting uh, in with some faction maybe with dwarves uh, to like delay the temple until round two something that we can consider maybe I think it's relatively balanced up most mm, pretty much any faction can be picked here often cultists will want a second temple um, because with cultists you want to build up and the reason for that is, is that uh, you the most you build up the most you can use your special ability so we'll soon go to for fakirs I think uh, it's what the problem with fakirs is cultists in the game. That's what I don't like. The brown competition is kind of hard. I one click one tick on cultist. If it comes back to us, we go fakirs here. All right, that's it. We'll see where uh, here our chances will be much improved if uh, cultists go start west. Cultists here, Science Darkling is not here, has the option to start both of his dwelling west and exploit these very, very cheap hex here. So that's a very viable plan for him. Okay. But if he does that, if he do that, um, if he does that, then we have uh, much more chance to expand around here. So we'll see. No, you go there. You went there. Mm. Okay. One willing to go there and uh, mermaid shall come with us. But where do you, the other one? Oh, yeah, probably there. Don't want to give them to give him that. Um. 
I kind of like this for leech purpose, but yeah. Then it means forgetting this, and yeah, I'm not super comfortable with that. I think this one is better. All right, so ideally what we want here will be to build a temple in round one and build a second temple in round two. Like the ideal, ideal plan. Temple in round two, we use a double spade in round three, we town up in round four, uh, and then this event I'm not sure we will use necessarily. Maybe we will already have our sanctuary by then, uh, um, because probably we need a sanctuary for the town event. So, and we probably don't want to use the stronghold, so we'll see what we... Here, let's say that round 5 will be a kind of joker event. I'm not really sure we'll use it. Uh, we'll just use it to build whatever we need, and then we'll try to cash in on last round, dwelling round. So hopefully that can work. Yeah, the past shipping, there won't be much competition for the sh past shipping here. Uh, you're right. Um, Cultists and mermaids are two factions that might use it a lot. Uh, it might be very good for them. We'll see what it gives. What's the result of that? Uh, Cultist here, I don't know if he regrets coming here. Well, there will become some kind of competition for this hex. Uh, if I was Dwarves, I will try to jump right on it as soon as I can. Because uh, Cultist, the only way to make a town here will be to take it. So. Mermaid went with the priest. I suppose he wants to send it to water in order to use this skull, this skull spade. Not a bad plan. Here, uh, if the plan is to get to temple early, does that mean that we temple up here, even though we probably don't make a town here? Just for the leeching proof. I mean, we could. It's something we can consider. Oh, I didn't see the... Um, Right? So one of the big problems of Fakir is one of the reasons this faction is bad. I think that's something that they should have, they should not have done, is the, their starting position in terms of power. As you see, we have, uh, we are behind in power from any faction, uh, which kind of makes it harder um, to use uh, action in the first round. So. Here Mermaid decided to, to build his trading post here, so that's a good occasion for us to build actually here. Uh, which is better, uh, because this dwelling here is more there for... It's very unlikely it will end up being a town. It might, but it's unlikely. I suppose everyone will go at one here. I will think. And then we'll have to see if we can find compensation going here too. So that's the thing with Factor. Usually you will have the compensation to open with the double spade. Uh, but here we don't, um, because we don't have enough power to use it. So, our compensation for not getting Earth One uh, is limited compared to other factions. Let's see. Here, uh, hopefully, Dwarves will go um, with digging uh, digging the Rab before Cultus does. That's if he doesn't, he will be definitely in problem. Um, Do we want to take this hex or this hex? Kind of hesitating. Problem with this hex is that dwarves might take it at some point. Uh, if we don't. Like here he could open with the double spade and get just next to it. And the problem... Yeah, I think I think that's the right move actually. So we'll use our spade to get here. Um, this will allow us to jump here eventually, if we need to. Um, if we use the double spade at some point, we can take those two 
those two hex, which is fine. I mean, there was definitely a reason to dig this one too. I uh, might have been better, I'm not sure. Yeah, so dwarves go with the double spade, and as predicted, it goes with these two hexes. Uh, meaning that cultist will have mm, very, very unlikely to form a town around here. Uh, which probably not so good because it probably means that cultist will want to go shipping and then he might beat us to the northern hexes so yeah the effect here with uh, landscape you can put it every time anytime you dig actually so uh, increasing carpet range uh, in round four we'll try to hit it might be difficult but we'll try to hit the town bonus in round four uh, and with the town bonus increase carpet range that's the plan all right uh, traditionally i would say fakirs will not want or two uh, because uh, they have easy they can do a lot of dwelling easy but they have difficulties uh, producing coins and their basic faction but that's before landscape once they have their landscape uh, they become this faction that doesn't really need coin and which uh, will more need workers to uh, uh, for their economy so that's why i took her i took her one there so here a very compelling plan is passing for the coins. Um, early on we'll need coins. We'll have just enough workers to build our second temple. Uh, we can send the priest in earth to use the bonus on the coal track. And use the coal bump to go a bit higher. I like that. So let's go for that. Right, some more power. It's good. So cultists use as priest here. It's fine. Yeah, good questions. Yes. What do we do? Do we do? Do we go double econ on this? We may. I'm a bit worried that other player will go for. Uh, water one <laughs> i'll go for water one here which eh, might make it difficult for us but double econ is tempting for sure we'll do a ton of carpet flight so how do we score in this game uh, we'll try to carpet flight a lot quite a lot uh, and we'll have like two temple early on you'll try to play the track as well as we can And then we'll see. <laughs> One of the things I'm concerned here is where will we put the landscape? Where and when do we put the landscape? Yeah, that's still is yellow space. It's not the end of the world, really. I'm not too too worried about that. we go with here I'm kind of tempted to send a priest to air so that will give us some cult and comp eventually um, some cult scoring most probably yeah I think I agree with you web uh, probably go for our air two here So taking like kind of stand on the uh, on the air cult, yeah, exactly. So uh, when air cult will be good. Um, how many speed do you need as factor? I think a bit more in this game because cultists are in, so they will take a lot of our yellow uh, hexes. I would expect so. Probably usually you don't need that many spade, uh, but I think I think here we probably do need. What I'm wondering is, do we go for the spade here? 
and get a temple, a second temple here. Science. It's if if we want to hit the cult, the the town in round four, uh, we better get going here. Maybe that's the better the better option. And hope that we still have enough power to um, to use a double spade. Or at least a single spade in round two in round three. So, what I don't know here is when will be the right time and where will be the right place to put Lansky. I'm thinking maybe here. It's a bit of a shame because you usually want to use this spot for trading post. Yeah, but the, you double dig, but you, where do you put it? Here? Uh, no, I didn't miss it intentionally. Uh, so the reason I was forward player, everyone rushed forward one. Uh, which I knew could happen, which I knew was likely to happen when I picked uh, this when I pick Fakirs, uh, hopefully we can find enough in a, uh, enough scoring with our faction ability to kind of compensate for that. We'll see. So yeah, if I that's the problem here. The, the reason why I'm wondering where I put the landscape here is that if you put it on the ground here, then you cannot use it for trading post, which means that when you do your sanctuary probably in round four, you have to pick fire two if you want to town up. Uh, and you probably don't want to do that because you want water one. Of course, maybe we can do both uh, fire two and uh, water one. Is that possible? Yeah, maybe. So let's go double econ here. We'll have a killer econ. For sure. So no one went water one, interestingly. I was kind of afraid of that, but turned out okay. Uh, yeah, you probably want three temple in this with Fakirs. Actually, so Dwarf is doing two power with the structure and three power with the dwelling, meaning that he will have tree power. It's not quite enough if he doesn't have leech until the end of the round, which he shall not to use any spade, so we shall be alright on this account. Let's get up on the earth. I wonder if Mermaid is going to build another dwelling. I think if Cultist went for uh, the priest here, it means that he he has to want to go for putting it in. Interestingly enough, it just gave us the double spade. I was worried Cultist was going to pass for the double spade, but because he went for the priest now, the double spade will be open. So, double spade will be open. What do we pass for here? Oh, I'm not sure what to pass for here. We'll have four. Mm. Priest is interesting, and this is interesting too. I see we're fat here, so let's go with the priest. It's never a bad choice. Yeah, Halig will go with bonus six. Eh? Definitely like something that could have been done. So, who exactly here threatens the double speed? Probably dwarves. I mean, I would love to send the priest in earth before using the double speed, but I don't know if it will be still there then, if I do it. So what did he just do? He advanced shipping. Hopefully it's to go here. But he might want to advance it again and go there, which will be less good. So do we risk sending a priest in Earth? 
I think we do. I mean, to hit the spade we need to get one up, those two coin will come handful. And only mermaids left to play... I think it's worth the risk. Tree dwelling landscape this round? <laughs> All right, we got it. My bolt spade will just sit there. That was... <laughs> you have to take some risk. I mean. Oh, the risk was not mermaid getting the, act, the, the double spade, it was dwarves. If, say, dwarves upgrade... if mermaid upgrade a trading post, then dwarves will have... Uh, on those two dwelling, then dwarves have enough to uh, use the double spade was my concern, but I, th I thought it wasn't too, too likely. Yeah, if Kiltus want to go north, definitely the landscape on B2 is fine. Uh, B2, so, so I'm not especially familiar with uh, Snell notation. Uh, for those of you who are even less than me, B2. So it's kind of grid-like chess. Uh, you have A, B, C, D, E, and so on. And you start counting from left to right without counting river tiles. So this is B1 and then this is B2 because we don't count river tiles. All right, so now we're here. So kill this one there. It's kind of, yeah, I'm not sure. Meaning that it probably doesn't want to go there. Will mermaid go there? Don't think so. What about this? What about we don't put the landscape at all here? What's the rush? All right, let's, let's do it. <laughs> ah, I don't know. I ha I'm having second tap. All right. Hmm. Okay, let's build the landscape here. Wait a second. So I wanted to build it here, but I want to uh, have priest jump here. I mean, yeah, that's kind of compromise. Yeah, do I have enough money? That's a good question. Maybe I could have delayed it. So hopefully, well, yeah. Hopefully we'll still be able to town up here at some point. It's not guaranteed, but we have options. We have the... with Air 2 we have very strong economy. Do we... do we want to leech that? Problem if, is if we leech he probably goes up the Air Cult. And it's just one point, so let's just deny it. Oh, hmm. Where things are going here? I think next turn we want a sanctuary and a temple. So I'm kind of tem very tempted to pass for this bonus here. Oh, look at that. Dwarf decided to town up. Suppose he's going for the two key town. It's always like tricky when there's a town event. When do you do you because it's sometimes it's good to town up before the town event. Even if the town event is good points. Uh here we're getting the um to Keytown is pretty good for dwarves. I mean, that's something that is definitely worth considering. Yeah, to Keytown. I think that was the right move. Yeah, I didn't realize either that dwarves went below 6 power. That's interesting. It's always a big decision to go below because then um, you can't use a double spade anymore, so one less person was likely to take it. So what does Cultus do here? He may pass. If he pass, well, what what can he do? 
I'd love to pass for the Stronghold's SA bonus. Okay, so it's there. Yeah, what dwarves burn it for? I don't know. Maybe the workers. Uh, I don't. I wasn't following close enough to say. So, do we build an extra dwelling? If we build an extra dwelling, I'm afraid dwarves passes for the workers. So, I think it's better to pass ourselves for this bonus. So here, what we'll try to do is do a Sanctuary and use the 4 points from this bonus. Uh, probably do another Temple with Fire 2. So with the Sanctuary we'll pick Water 1, with the Temple we'll pick Fire 2. Uh, and hope we are set for scoring in these two rounds with a lot of jumping, <laughs> basically. <laughs> A7, yeah, maybe. Okay, that's a big leech. Do we take that? Yeah, it's early on. Let's take it. Well, there there will be ways to get a second town, I think. We can take either uh, these four hexes, but we could take these four too. That could work too. No more fast five. Fire two, you mean? The plan was to get fire two at the at the beginning. Depends if we want a second town. If we want a second town, we'll need fire two one way or another. But it's true that now we don't really need it for this turn. So at least there's no rush to pick it. Yeah, Sid. Uh, it's kind of the same question. Do we do we go for fire two? I yeah no. We'll see. It's not a priority now. Interestingly enough. Kiltist went for fire 2 and not water 1. I'm very tempted to go for the money here. It might mean we skip fire, we skip water 1 or fire 2. <laughs> but money is just very, very important. So let's go for it. Uh, did I say water 2? I meant water 1. Yeah, for Water 2, as far as Water 2 is concerned, uh, and it's very circumstantial favor. I, I Actually, I've seen stats saying that uh, Fakirs are not so bad with Water 2, but then I suppose they are need some uh, Water Cult bonus, uh, especially the Priest. Uh, but yeah, Water 2, uh, it probably doesn't give you quite enough if you don't have any cult reward uh, on the water cult to, get, to justify it. Uh, the thing is, cult are really not that important. Uh, that's one thing I think, uh, especially on board game arena, people overplay a lot the cults. It's not such, uh, su such an important source of points. I find that playing the track, playing uh, network, playing the bonus are, are all priority to me. Uh, so with cultists, of course, you want to play a little bit on the cults more, but with many factions, cults are just an afterthought, really, I think. You mainly want cults for the cult income and not for the point you give most of the time. Uh, carpet spade e6. Honestly, I would prefer to use a double spade and, and carpet spade a7. That will be better. But we'll have to see. So we'll see if the gamble pays off here. Cultists might decide to just go for Water 1 now. Which will leave us in an interesting spot. <laughs> Not sure. No, so he didn't. Uh, Alright. So first thing we do, we go, we want Water 1. And then, what do we want to do? I mean, there is something to be said to double spade that gray. Which was, uh, I know someone else suggested it earlier. I don't remember whom on the chat. Yeah, that's the plan, to build a5 and uh, then use the double spade on uh, those two hexes. Yeah, 
It's possible that Cultus used the double speed, we'll have to see. Cultus is at three ships, so he might be going here. Which is not too good for us. I hadn't seen him advance shipping actually. Yeah, exactly, A7 is gone. We'll have to find something else. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose we don't go for three towns anyway, so that should be all right. Let's get the range. I mean, look at it this way. We don't have uh, Earth 1, but we're right there on the points total. We have a good chance to do well on network. Probably win the cult. I mean, we have some something going for us here. Hmm. Why mermaid will want a bridge? Isn't that strange? Yeah, uh, I thought about two spade on the black. That's one of the possibility we might end up doing, but. Right now it doesn't seem a priority. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Mermaid one to town up here. Hmm. I mean, one thing we may consider is uh, taking this gray and then this brown and doing the... So this brown with the spade, the cult spade, and doing a bridge here to build our town here, rather than here, since Cult has decided to go this way. That's one possibility. I think I kind of like that actually. Yeah, your middle yellow is very valuable for sure. What I'm worried is that will will he use the double speed? Then? Well, I suppose we'll have to find out. So another player is now below 6 power, which means that there's little competition for the double speed. And with our uh, air 2 it's kind of looking good. It's kind of looking good now. Hmm. So apparently he wants to save the landscape. No idea what he wants to do with it. Probably wants to put it here. Probably that's the idea. You want to do two towns, so we put the landscape here. Kiltus now have trouble connecting. If he wants to connect, you have to take this red. So maybe use the double spit there. That will not be too bad. No, you did take the yellow. Why? <laughs> what have I done to you? <laughs> yeah. Not sure what's the idea here. I mean, I can take the red now and Cultus is not connecting. Well, yeah. Not sure if it's the best I can do, but... I could do it. Other ideas to take this brown. 
just so I use the spade here with the plan I was talking about. Hmm. A town, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe that's his plan. So taking this thread has some advantages. First, it, f it stopped cultists from connecting. It's not possible after that. Well, maybe through these, but very expensive. Uh, and it opens up to this kind of side of the map, which might be interesting. Uh, of course, probably dwarves ends up taking this one. And we can dig this and have these access to these two. So I kind of like this. Mm. Yeah, people often five horse down over networks, that's true. What I don't know though is what will I do with my spare spade from the air coal. So I ping Malion, I hadn't seen you yet. Hmm. Yeah, you just arrived. Good to see you. Hmm. Can I afford to go there and then go there? You know what? I probably can. Let's do it. Maybe Dwarf's hard dig the, the red, but it seems so expensive, I really doubt it. Yeah, the problem with the town north, uh, I find, is that I will want to use my cult spade and then turn one of these two into a color close to brown and then I'm afraid brown might take it. So that's why it's, that's my concern here. As you see it passes before me. And yeah that was my concern. Suppose we can still go here. Hi, Yikun. Yeah, you watched the video on YouTube. Hope, hope you like it. It's modest, uh, modest attempt to try to understand better the game. Oh, that's good. That leech is kind of important because we're doing six power right now, which means that no matter what we pass for, we can have the double speed next round. Now, this question, what do we want to pass for? I mean, either the priest, I think, or the workers. We could take the past shipping just to take it away from mermaids, maybe. I think we need the power, because if we want to build a bridge, we'll need a lot of power, so... I say we go for the worker. 
On the other end, the priest is kind of like four points. Eh. Tough call. So are you there now? Uh, I think I've kind of lost connection there. I think it's somewhat of a talk, tough call, but... I want to go for power here. Okay, good. Thank you. I Yeah, I saw that it was uh, off and I was wondering, but... Glad, glad it works now. Alright, so that's the plan. That's not bad, 29 viewers, yeah. I think, I, I honestly, when I started it, I I was really not expecting such a response. <laughs> I thought I would be streaming in front of five people, you know, just discussing casually strategy. I, I had no idea. Uh, it's pretty good, 29 viewers. So yeah, I thought that Kiltus would be afraid of this. So... Let's go for... this and hope that we get enough leech to get bridge at some point should not be a problem really um yeah i think also uh, i feel terramistica is a more popular game than Agricola. I, mean, I, I don't know, I don't really know the Agricola community, but my impression was that it was more more popular, but maybe it's just because that's what I know. I don't know. All right, how do we want to play this now? Definitely want some trading post. We want to send a priest and water here. Kind of tempted, honestly. Uh, priest and air. Well, it, he was afraid I was taking the... If you want to know... I think he was afraid I will take this hex, so he started to build there first. So that's the reason why he didn't connect. What's the plan now? What do we want to do? We want to do a town here for sure. We are going to win that work. That's definitely the plan. Maybe Mermaid will challenge us. We'll see. Oh wow. Now what do we do with that? Do we take do we leech that? That's big leech. Alright, that's a lot, but I think it's worth it. And how do I why do I think that? Don't ask me. <laughs> yes. 
gut feeling. Uh, I, I want to build a bridge and I hate waiting for last round to build a bridge because then someone else might dig it. So that's me needle thinking. Nothing too deep there. Mm. Yeah, Agricola, my, I kind of have the same feeling than you, uh, Hubert. Uh, Fire X. That's it's a lot about it's a lot of cards to know and to understand. So that's one of the reason I had trouble to get into the game, uh, and also quite a lot. Um, I I never played war. I did play draw, but I didn't know the card well enough to kind of know what to take and not to take. So it seems that there's a lot of uh, if you don't play draw, then it seems that a lot lies on the card you're picking. Uh, and if you do play draw, then you really have to know what you're doing to understand what kind of combination will be good and so on. So I just never really got to the point where it gets interesting when you have like this kind of mastery of uh, of the cards to really appreciate the game. I don't think anyone will trap this hex, so I can just build a bridge here. So how many gems do we have left? I say four, right? We build two trading posts and then we have four workers to jump with. That means we need four priests, we already have one, we're producing two, and we can get one through the town. So probably we don't need any more priests. A temple is not like absolutely necessary here. I think. Oh, is there? That will be handy. So I kind of... Uh, um, so Sid is saying that um, there is like this extension that shows you power ratings for cards. Uh, probably that will be very helpful, helpful for someone like me. <laughs> because... Uh, yeah, do we leech that? Yeah. Because that's always how I felt, like, to learn the game I will have to understand better the power of the cards. But yeah, I suppose it's a lot about combination, for sure. So I don't know. Um, we will leech that. I mean, we'll be doing a lot of power. Maybe we do when we pass them? Is that something we can consider? I mean, we won't need a ton of coins. That's probably fine. So I said we need four priests, but it's actually three priests, I think. So we are really, really sad now. Do we pass or do we risk another trading post? Kind of tempted to risk a last trading post before passing. I mean, we need six coin, eight coin. Yeah, no, we don't need another trading post. Let's just pass and make sure that we maximize what we get. Yeah, as I said, I think probably uh, Agricola is a very good. I'm not surprised that people who are good at TM are good at Agricola. It seems like these kind of similar kind of game. Maybe not as similar as Clan of Caledonia and Terra Mystica, but kind of similar game for sure. Xivak, yeah, absolutely. Xivak is this legendary player uh, who does thing in Terra Mystica, and you're like looking at the end of the game, and you're like, that's impossible. And <laughs> I'm sure he cheated some way because he cannot have done that. And then you look, and everything works, <laughs> move after move, and you still do not believe it. It just still seems to not make any sense, but he's doing it. So, yeah. 
it's where you see a game like Terramus got has so many layers of skill that you can have. Uh, and that's usually a sign of a good game. When player can do things and you're like, that's, <laughs> yeah, I must have cheated. That usually means that the game is deep because it means that you can really learn and really improve. Do we have enough here? Hard to say. We'll have a good game. I wonder if I pass too early. Maybe a training post more will have been good. I. It's hard to tell. Because we'll have like 1,000 workers for the last round. Network won't be a problem. We don't do much in coal, but that's fine. I mean, cults are kind of spread. So, how much point do you think we'll have at the end of this round? Odds are open. We're not doing 192. <laughs> We're not Xevaxiari for sure. <laughs> Obviously, the main rivalry here is with um, with cultist tool scene. Cultists, at least it doesn't connect. Well, maybe he will. Maybe he can triple big this one to connect. So, what do we want to do in the last round? At least two trading posts and four dwellings. So, that's four worker and six coin for the trading post and four worker and eight coin for dwellings that's eight worker and 14 coins three priests so i said 14 coins but it's really eight coins because of the landscape that we have we'll get three at least three back so that should not be a problem we already seem to have enough and so we're declining that. No reason to leech it. Is going for three towns crazy? What do you think, guys? We have so many workers. I mean, let's say we use the double spade on the black. We, tr we three worker dig this one. We build a temple yeah i don't think i don't think that that third town is an option here because if we start to build real dwellings well first of all we don't get the points from the jump and then we don't get the coins from the jump so that's a very different thing yeah exactly We'll have three gems here, two, two trading posts. We'll do eight points. As like I said, what's the the bidding art is open. How do you think we'll finish at the end of this round if we don't count end of game? I think it can be quite high. And right now it doesn't seem so much.
I think that we can always hard dig with workers, so that should not be a problem. I'm tempted, I was doing some calculation, and I think we might be able to do four jump if we go for the coin's action. I think that's possible. I think that's in the car. No, we're not increasing dig. What we'll do here, one dwelling and two trading posts, then a temple, then another trading post, and then a bunch of dwellings. And if that works, I think we can end up around 120, I think. Because it's nine points for the trading post plus eight point passing, so just that is 17 points. The town is 9 point, so that's 26. The dwelling is 2, and the 4 jump dwelling are 24. So you do the math. And then you have also air 1 that you have to factor in. 120, I think. Four jumps, yeah, that's... <laughs> I know that's a lot, but <laughs> that's what I'm going for. I, it might not work. I think I think it's possible. I think it's in the car, but we'll see. We have a lot. We definitely have a lot. No, I can fit air one easily. Because I can trading post here. Okay, so let's not take any more chance. We'll build here. And the minute just take this hex if he eventually does we jump here we need this hex so do we have to be jumpy about air one I don't think so it doesn't seem like anyone is super hot on air one right now I think it doesn't have to be the priority here who's our main competitor here I said cultists, but between cultists and mermaids, say, who are you afraid of? Uh, between, I mean, mermaids and dwarves. I think dwarves uh, are the less threatening. Not much network. So mermaid has another town coming. Yeah. So we give priority to power to dwarves, I think. So yeah, if we succeed to do four jumps this turn, as I hope, uh, we can do. It will mean we'll f uh, finish with 15 structures and it will really really have paid off to go for to economic favor. It really will have worth it. So yeah, as I said, 4 jumps is 24 points. We pass for 12, so that's 36. Two tra 3 trading posts is 9, so that's 45. A town 9, so that's 54. It will be like around 115 in the end game points. That's not bad. Yeah, that's true. Oh, so you see, there we go. Call this one there. Now uh, I have no choice, I have to take this hex before he does.
Yeah, Air 2 has been pretty good in this game. We had a lot, lot, lot of digs and the fact that uh, both two players went below 5 power. He will really help us with that. Will be will it be enough for the win? Yeah, let's see. Maybe maybe not. One way or another it will have been a fun game, I think. Factors without what? So what did happen there? Cultus went here. Not sure why. Do we want that? I mean, six, eleven, fourteen. Let's see why we would want that. Honestly, I think we're pretty pretty much set here. Air 2, yeah? I don't know, I think Fakirs can very well play without Air 2. I say that Fakirs usually need less digs than other factions, so... Not sure Air 2 is the best for them. But I'm not... Fakir is not my strongest faction, for sure. I haven't played them enough. There's much better player Fakirs, uh, Fakirs here. Uh, I'm just even on this side, so maybe you're right. My best faction. Uh, good question. Lately, I've been. I it used to be engineers. So I think that the first faction that you should try to master is engineers, because uh, they have like a very fast learning car curve. At the beginning, they are very hard to play, but once you kind of get the hang to them, it becomes very fast your strongest faction and that's what happened with me lately though uh, i remember at the beginning i had a lot of difficulty mastering the arklings it took me a while but now it's probably among my best factions i think one of them that i find it's a bit the, kind of the opposite of uh engineers they start easy but their learning curve it's kind of hard and the better you get to play at them, the kind of slower the learning curve is. Uh, so it's one of these factions that I often find it's not played uh, optimally, although everyone says it's an easy faction. Uh, I find that people make a lot of mistakes playing it. Um, so, and uh, lately I've had a lot, lot, lot of success with Witches. Uh, witches is definitely... Witches and Nomads, I'd say, are two faction I have the most fun playing with. Because they have so many different strategies that they can use. And I think that it's two faction with which I'm doing pretty good. I can do pretty good. I'm confident when they are around. Um, Alright. Feel like we should sneak, sneak in a carpet fly here, just in case. Mermaid. Uh. It's probably not really necessary. At the same time, I mean, what's the rush, right? Maybe here. That's a very good question. About landscape, I come back to that. That's a good question. Um, let's just play the move here. I 
Yeah, I want to trade impulse. Uh, all right. So we go for the priest. Um, so is landscape good for rebalancing the faction? Depends, really. Uh, it was good for fakirs, mainly. But it's kind of handicapping a little bit Darklings. Uh, or quite a lot of Darklings, actually, because their requirement is hard. Uh, so at least for that it's good. But then... Um, I'd say generally I'm not convinced landscape were well designed uh, as well. Uh, some of them are okay, but like for Chaos Magician, say we needed a boost, they got the worst landscape you can imagine. Uh, Giant's landscape is kind of a bit lame, uh, which is, yeah, which is our strong faction, so that's okay. But like Engineers, they got a super strong landscape, uh, while they were already an overpowered faction. So. I think that's very unfortunate. Uh, Dwarf slash landscape is really good, so Dwarf Fakirs, I think they done a really good job. But other than that, not too convinced. What I think they should have done, what I would have liked them to do, um, is more scoring landscape and less. Um, less economic landscape like they did. I'll explain that in a minute, what I mean by that. So... Are we afraid that dwarves will pick this? I mean, it might it will not be the end of the world. Just to be sure. I mean, CM's landscape was not a bad idea, but uh, it should have been a bit different. Like, for example, if the requirement was to have, I don't know, say two temples down, to put it, then it would have been kind of interesting. But here, the problem with the CM landscape is that uh, you need the stronghold and you don't want to build a stronghold very late and then getting another starting point. Uh, so you don't want to get the stronghold till very late, and getting another starting point very late is useless. So the landscape ends up being more or less uh, look uh, more or less useless. Yeah, that's a good idea, uh, Rickery. I think that will make it much better already. If it was granting connection, if it was automatically connected, some something like that would be pretty good. Like automatically, like normal connection to the stronghold, that will be a good idea. Yeah, I like that. Right, so pretty much set here. As I said, will it be enough? We still have what? 15, 
plus 12. We still have 27 points coming. So yeah, maybe 122, something like that. It's not bad. I think with network it will be enough. I mean, we really have crumbs on the call track, but that's all fine. I mean, with network we have 24 in-game in points, that's pretty good. I'm quite okay with that. I just realized something. Didn't thought about that, but huh? I should have accepted the sleeve earlier. Because oh, that's too bad. Yeah, no, maybe not. I was wondering, like, could I have enough to get, if I had a priest, to get a, a digging, a hard digging. So if I can change five power to one priest, but I don't have enough workers, so that's fine. I mean, it's very close, but not quite enough. Hmm. So don't think that the temple helps us in any way here. I think we just pass. So one twenty two. As you remember we're at one at sixty six I think at the beginning of the round. Pretty good round. Pretty good last round in the end. Uh, and that's even more than that because we have some, what, two points left. So that's 124 from resources. Now, I think, yeah, I think it's enough. It was a fun game. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I went for five years. So that was an interesting five years with no art one and two economic favor. Uh, we don't do a rocket score here, but it's enough for the win. Yeah. What we did was to do a lot of jumps. We'll see exactly at the end uh, when we see the score uh, how many points we've done through jumping, but I expect quite a lot. All right, so yeah, with good advance, 15 points advance. So thanks for to all the participants. Uh, as I said just before concluding, we'll see how so how did we score if we didn't have our twan here in this case. Um, played the track a little bit better than everyone else. We were able to score 26 points out of the track, which is not a high scoring uh, amount on the track but maybe it wasn't such a rich track uh yeah oops oh no where is it gone 
Wait a second, I've just lost my screen. Uh, let's go back to it. All right, so yeah, I was saying, um, yeah, it's two icon overkill with landscape. I didn't really have the, ch the choice actually. Everyone, I was fourth player and uh, everyone rushed for earth one. So it wasn't really a choice to go two icon, but uh, I think in this game, actually, the two icon favor uh, really paid. Uh, it wa I was able to use them enough to generate a lot of points. Uh, as I said, so uh, favor tile, we still did 19, even if we didn't have Earth one, so it's almost as much as a cultist when it ended up last, uh, and yeah, it's a lot less maybe than that mermaids, uh, but still, uh, we were able to compensate in other ways, and especially from our faction uh, inner power ability of scoring points through jumping. So twelve points from bonus cards. Of course, mermaid got a very high score here, and that's because of the past shipping bonus. Uh, Oh, I um, So, uh, from town, we succeeded to do 13 points, which is a, as much as anyone else, really. Uh, which is good for Fakirs, because often Fakirs, you are stuck with only 4 points for town, uh, because you do only one and you have to take the extent shipping. Uh, stronghold? Yeah, I didn't have, like, the economy really like came together at the end really i didn't really need stronghold in the end uh i mean didn't need the increase range so uh didn't feel like it was necessary to do to go stronghold uh we went network that was very very important uh plan part of the plan so we go to econ want to have a big network and win network and that's what we did with 15 structure that's pretty good uh crumbs and cults but that's what Fakir's life is. I mean, I've seen some Fakirs succeed to go, go out high cults, but that's very unusual. Uh, I was very impressed by the play of players who did that. Uh, so, yeah, we did 36 points out of jumping. That's huge. I mean, uh, 36 points, it means that we've done 9 jump, uh, and that's obviously a lot, lot, lot of points. Uh, so, yeah, in the end, we did even we started with more points than everyone, but even if uh, we had like uh, all the same score, we did score a little bit more than everyone else, so uh, it was good. Yeah, I think I ended up being a good game, an interesting game without Art One again. Uh, so uh, that will be it for me today. Uh, as I said, I'll uh, continue working on the strategy video. Uh, there's one that was uh, released a bit earlier this week and I'm working for another one uh, which will be on The Alchemist. So check that on the channel uh, and you can see the replay on the channel. Uh, you'll see I'll, I've started to do some editing so it's better to kind of uh, view the game a bit faster uh, if you want to uh, look for that. Uh, and leave some comments if you do, if you have some analyze, post-game analysis, always very interesting. Uh, so yeah, um, exactly, yeah, for sure. It's a bad cult investment, but uh, as I said, I'll be tuning out now. So uh, nice to see you all. It was very active chat this week. I, I really I enjoyed that. Hope it continues to go this way. Uh, so have a good one everyone and I'll see you at the latest next Tuesday. I still want to do like surprise stream but up to now uh, I haven't been able. So yeah, thanks Rikiri, it was nice to see you and Crazy Crocodile, hope uh, you're getting into the game more and more. So bye guys. <laughs>